Yes, let us sing. If you see the syllabus, in paper one, part B, Medieval India, this is the beginning. Unit 13, early Medieval India, 750 to 1200. So that means up to 750, questions are related to ancient part. If we consider the ruler, important ruler, before the beginning of 750, you might be remembering Harshavardhana. Harshavardhana, Badami Chalukyas, Pallavas, they were the major powers when it comes to ancient part before the emergence of early medieval part. Let me draw this picture. Always better to imagine our India map. Now, before 750, In this location, Harshavardhana. And in this part, Chalukyas. And in this part, Pallavas. These people were the major powers when it comes to the 750 AD. This is the condition. Now our UPSC syllabus is, now you need to handle this one. It is talking about early medieval India. That means after 750, what happened till 1200. Now if we consider this, once Harshavardhana is not there, then in this place, different rulers in Kashmir, Different dynasty emerged. One major important ruler was Lalita Aditya. And similarly, when it comes to the Gangetic Valley also, different rulers emerged like Vermans. And gradually, Vermans were replaced by a different dynasty here, Gurjara Pratiharas. This is the condition after 750 AD. This side, in this condition, Chalukyas were replaced by Rashtrakotas. With respect to Bengal region, here different dynasty, powerful dynasty emerged. They are Palas. So from 750 to 1200, Important powerful dynasties were Palas this side, Gurjara Pratiharas, Rashtrakotas. And when it comes to the deep south, later Cholas are going to emerge as more powerful one. But before the emergence of Cholas, Rashtrakotas, Gurjara Pratiharas, Palas, they were very powerful. And these three rulers were fighting for an important location called Kanauj. Kanauj. This became an important prize for the people who were ruling the Indian subcontinent. It was also the, now you can see there were so many other rulers also, not only Pal Palas, Pratiharas, Rashtrakutas. There were so many small, small kingdoms were there. 
and these kingdoms we combinedly call this is the age of feudalism unlike <coughs> mauryans unlike guptas there was no centralized administration around this time decentralized administration many kingdoms were ruling and these people were almost independent in their own territories that is why we call them all feudal lords or it is the age of feudalism under these circumstances our upsc is asking questions with respect to what was the political condition that is majorly feudalism and second one the economic activities because agriculture is the dominating profession of that time and in this time period agriculture dominated and at this time the trading activities were there but not dominated like post mauryan period or during the early gupta period economic condition and culture was also is important chapter in our this particular period and in this time period for example rashtrakutas patronized art and culture with respect to kannada literature they have built temples best example ellora temple and similarly palas also they patronized buddhism and when it comes to gurjara pratiharas they also patronized literature and also important hinduism related culture was patronized later these people were are going to be replaced with a new dynasty small small dynasties for example kajuraho temples kajuraho temples were built in this location during the time period of chendela rulers that is why by this time period small small kingdoms emerged and combinedly we call them as rajputs in this part combinedly we call rajputs so it is the age of rajputs also now all these things upsc is testing now let us go to the syllabus early medieval india 750 to 1200 cultural traditions in india 750 to 1200 you can see both of them here between 750 to 1200 we have to see political economic angle also cultural traditions in india if we see the detailed one let us see is it visible kartik 13 early medieval india 752 1200 now consider this this is the detailed one upsc itself has given these details now in these details we can analyze this not visible not clear now now clear okay you can see this the unit is 
13 early medieval India. Now in that, we have broad. The first one is feudalism. The first one is feudalism. As I see, this is the age of feudalism. That's why the first one is Indian feudalism. Next, come to the economy. UPSC has particularly asked about these headings. Village economy, agrarian economy, trade and commerce, urban settlements. So this shows that during this particular time period, what is the condition of agriculture? What is the condition of trade? What is the condition of urban settlements? This framework is going to be common. Agriculture, industry, trade, urbanization, whatever may be the time period. These are going to be very common one. Same is the case here also. UPSC particularly asked village economy because it was the age of feudalism. Many agrarian settlements, agriculture is the major one. What type of agrarian economy was there? And what type of village economy was there? Now, trade and commerce, what is the condition of trade and commerce? Urban settlements, are there any urban settlements? This comes under economy. When it comes to society, questions can be asked on what is the village society? Because Varna system dominated during ancient time period. What is the situation of village society in this particular time period? New social order, many in place of Brahmanical Earlier, Brahmanas were the one who were literate people. By this time, a new section of Jatis, caste also emerged. Because of that, new social order is another important segment of history. A separate uh, literate section called scribes emerged during this time period. It will be asked in that. The status of the Brahman, another one. Condition of women, women condition since the ancient times, whether it is Vedic period, later Vedic period, Mahajanapadas, it always, condition of women is an important segment when it comes to Indian history. Same is the case with this particular time period also. Now, Indian science and technology, what is the condition of science and technology during this time period? This is going to be very common framework. Economy, suppose if you take later Vedic time period. Questions can be asked on what is the economic condition of later Vedic time period? What is the society of later Vedic time period? What is the science and technology development during Vedic time period? That is why this is going to be the common one, only time period changes. So same is the case between 750 to 1200 also, we have to study these segments. Now, particularly this age, particularly dominated by Cholas, before the end of 1200 or before the end of 1200 these people are very important people because they built uh, empires not only within tamil nadu or the De southern region but they conquered the foreign territories also like sri lanka southeast asia so the maldives they have built the pan ocean empire or the ocean empire so this is a very big achievement in our ancient India. That is why specifically Cholas are going to be important one in this time period. Under Cholas, they will ask about administration. So what is the administration? Again, along with administration, they were very popular for local self-government. During British time period, Britishers were always saying to Indians that we don't know how to rule themselves, rule ourselves and also we do not know what is democracy means but in our own ancient history we have the ancient and early medieval history we have the evidence of democratic elements for example local self governments in chola time period it's an example of democracy in india same is the case with ancient time period also during the time period of Maha buddha and mahavira they both belong to kingdoms called republics so republican kingdoms this is like modern day today also we are celebrating 26th every year january 26th as republic day this republic concept was there during ancient time period also 
this is the importance of history now during chola time period also this local governance tradition was there that is why particularly this question often is asked in the examination along with administration with respect to cholas we are going to see again economy during chola time period society during chola time period their contribution to the art and architecture this is under first one 13th early medieval india now this is the 13th early medieval india what is the second part cultural traditions in india 752 1200 let us see what is detailed syllabus is given over there let us come to cultural traditions in india now if we see this this is also the age of ideas philosophies for example this is the age of shankaracharya during this time period shankaracharya he emerged from kerala region and from kerala he traveled in different parts and reached kashmir region also through his advaita philosophy he revolutionized the hinduism or the upanishadic concept this is also the age of philosophy when it comes to culture and not only adi shankara but there are some other saints also this is the age of bhakti movement when it comes to tamil nadu alvars nayanars so in religion aspect also in philosophical aspect also there were some major developments and the, all these were part of the 14th unit that is the cultural traditions in india now in that philosophy is the one section now you can see upsc is particularly specifically mentioned about shankaracharya and vedanta vedanta was the philosophy given by him or he extended vedanta was there since later vedic time period but he has given the modern approach at this time ramanuja visist advaita madhavacharya brahma mimamsa so specifically ups is asking about three important bhakti saints philosophers and we need to study about them now when it comes to religion angle now we can see religion angle forms and features of religion tamil devotional cult growth of bhakti and it was also the islam also emerged in 600s islam also emerged in saudi arabia and from there it traveled to different parts of the world during the time period of rashtrakutas here you can see rashtrakutas during the time period of rashtrakutas many islamic settlements were also there in the western coast because we were trading with west asia since ancient times during the time period of harappan civilization also harappans traded with mesopotamians Ge geographically it is the same location where islam was also started that is why now islam was the religion that time by the time period of rashtrakutas many muslim traders also settled and rashtrakutas followed open approach or the tolerant approach they allowed muslims to have their own mosques also to for worshiping purpose so that is how islam also reached by this time so by this time period hinduism buddhism was also there jainism was also there islam also came christianity was also there saint thomas during the time period of gondofernes in first century ad itself just immediately after the death of jesus christ christianity came in this location saint thomas reached kerala even today also many christians who were there in kerala they were the one who have accepted christianity during the time period of saint thomas the tomb of saint thomas is there near madras so this shows christianity was also already there 
even though it was not a dominant one it is was also there so all these things we have to see under now islam and its arrival in india like bhakti movement in hinduism sufism in islamic tradition so these things are mentioned by upsc forms and features of religion tamil devotional cult growth of bhakti islam and its arrival in india sufism now come to this now these traditions helped in the literature development also for example bhakti saints alwars and nainars they created their own tradition of literature now we have to see about the literature here you can see literature in sanskrit language growth of tamil literature literature in the newly developing languages it was the age of regionalism feudalism was there independent local languages became very powerful that is why in this part gujarati marathi tamil telugu kannada bengali so hindi all these independent vernacular languages also emerged during this time period that is why this age is very very important to understand the modern evolution of present day languages and whatever the ideas of ancient times hinduism buddhism jainism they all have taken the climax shape during this time period this age is very very important in understanding the the mature stage of the ancient traditions so literature also they asked about growth of tamil literature sanskrit literature newly developing languages means different telugu kannada marathi hindi oriya bengali assami all these things kalhana rajatarangini in kashmir region kalhana rajatarangini and it was also the age of invasions from this part invasions were taking place gajni mohammad gori mohammad also raided during this time period only along with uh, those raids alberuni came when alberuni came to india he observed about indian conditions and he has written in his own book alberuni that is why we have to study about what are the contents of alberuni's india and how alberuni viewed he is from central asia he came to india and he observed it is like during mauryan time period a greek ambassador called megasthenes came megasthenes has written a book called indica so this the in the eyes of greek person what is the condition of india same is the case alberuni has observed certain things about india we will study many very very important question upsc always asks next one art and architecture during this time period what is the art and architecture all these kingdoms emerged as powerful one they contributed for the growth of art and architecture temple architecture sculpture painting so all these things were part of art and architecture all these were part of the 14th unit <coughs> now this is about from 750 to 1200 after 1200 in northern part here turkish people dominated the scene so if we take in this condition now this is the age of invasions here rajputs were there and these people were turkish people initially they came from central they settled in the modern day afghanistan region iranian region pakistan region in the western side of mainly in afghanistan region and from there they continued and rajputs versus uh, turkish invaders fighting took place and finally they established delhi sultanate in 1206 we call delhi sultanate now you need to understand 
when these developments were going on in northern side in deccan side the indian rulers were ruling for example here adavas hoysalas pandyas here senas so many rulers here in gujarat region uh, in odisha region gangas here solankis solankis were the successors of chalukyas so this is how many kingdoms were already there and here in hyderabad region kakatiya now when these people delhi sultanate was established they are going to have they are going to fight with these rulers as well now we have to study same thing during delhi sultanate period what is the economy when new islam islam dominated the scene what is the social condition how it helped in integration of different religions their art and architecture they also contributed for the development of art and architecture and when it comes to language language like regional languages sanskrit ancient times regional language emerged now by this they brought persian persian is from iran new language persian dominated the scene we have to see the persian literature the influence of iran between the interaction between iranian language and indian language since ancient times it is very common if you remember ashoka time period ashoka has issued certain inscriptions in northwestern part of india in mainland he issued in brahmi script but in the northwestern part he issued in which script karosthi script karosthi script is the development because of brahmi script this is indian subcontinent and this side aramaic script this is from iran so we are talking about mauryan times 250 bc at that time period itself indian script iranian script aramaic script combined a new script also emerged that is karosthi script so this shows the interaction between indian side and the iranian side was very ancient now by medieval times persian language now entered so persian language also became very important religion uh, literature wise many texts were written and at the same time islam was born in saudi arabia arabic is another important language but majorly major literature developed during this time period in persian language comparing with arabic similarly here turkish language but there was no, not much development of turkish language mainly the persian literature now if we see the upsc condition upsc what upsc mentioned 13th century from 1200 to 1300 so these developments from 1300 to 1400 now you can see gurian invasions factors behind gurian success gurid means from present day afghanistan region after ghazni mohammad gurin mohammad gori raided right establishment of delhi sultanate foundation of delhi sultanate and early turkish sultans now you have to see the term turkish sultans consolidation the rule of iltutmish balban next important rulers iltutmish and balban next economic consequence social consequences cultural consequences this is very common with respect to history cultural social economic so history is nothing but we study society economy culture art and culture different rulers for different time periods this is what now when it comes to this after 1400s by the time period of 1400s delhi sultanate were, became very very powerful and the rulers became very powerful by the time kalji emerged kalji dynasty emerged almost they have reached the armies of delhi sultanate reached deep south 
the commander of Alauddin Kalji reached Madurai. So Madurai is in deep south. That is why it has become very important phenomena in our history. That is why UPSC specifically mentions about the 14th century, means 1300 to 1400. So this is initially 1200 to 1300. Now 1300 to 1400. Here you can see Kalji revolution. Second one, Alauddin Kalji, specifically Alauddin Kalji. Now Alauddin Kalji, his territorial expansion, conquest and territorial expansion. And he is very well known for some reforms, agrarian reforms, agriculture reforms, economic reforms. And this is another one. Now if we see the questions, here I have given some questions also. For example, when it comes to the conquest, here this is how questions are being asked. Alauddin Kalji was a typical despot. When it comes to market reforms, the market regulations of Alauddin Kalji were useful for the Sultan's military might, but harmful for the economy of the Sultanate. This was asked in 2022, this year question. So this is how UPSC asks various questions. Agrarian reforms, market reforms, so if there is any ruler who brought many reforms, for example, during Akbar time period also, he brought certain reforms, administrative reforms, religious reforms. When it comes to literature also, many developments took place during Akbar time. UPSC asks question in those. This is with respect to Alauddin Kalji, agrarian reforms. Now, next important dynasty, Tughlaq dynasty. Here, Muhammad bin Tughlaq, he was very powerful one, very innovator, but even though his projects failed, but considering the age, it was very advanced in nature. Now, what are his projects? UPSC specifically mentions what are the major projects, agrarian measures, bureaucracy of Muhammad bin Tughlaq, next, Firoz Shah Tughlaq. Again, agrarian measures, achievements in civil engineering, public works, decline of the Sultanate, foreign contacts, and Ivan Batuta. So Ivan Batuta like Megasthenes during Mauryan time period, Al Biruni during uh, Ghazni time period, Ivan Batuta at this time period. Now this is how the 14th century. Now you can see UPSC clearly mentioned next unit, society, culture, economy in the 13th and 14th centuries. So simple, 13th and 14th centuries, again in the same time period like we have done from 750 to 1200. What is the society? What is the economy? What is the culture? Now repetition. From 1200 to 1300. So this is 13th century to 14th century. They are asking same thing. Now you can see society. When it comes to society, specifically like composition of rural society, ruling classes, town dwellers, women condition, religious classes, caste, slavery under the Sultanate, Bhakti movement, Sufi movement, Islam religion emerged, Sufism was part of Islam. Now that became very strong in Indian subcontinent as well. Bhakti movement was continuing before the time period, Alvars, Nainars, Bhakti movement, Shankaracharya, Ramanujacharya, many people contributed for Bhakti movement. That tradition is also continuing. So Bhakti movement, Sufi movement. Now when it comes to culture, you can see literature, Parisian literature. So Parisian is the main dominant literature language during Delhi Sultanate time period. That is why Parisian literature. Literature in regional languages of North India. The local tradition, local language is also continuing. That is why literature in regional languages in this time period. Next, literature in the languages of South India. So it is, they are asking about vernacular languages developments. Sultanate architecture, then paintings, then evolution of a composite culture. So now Islamic tradition, Turkish. So you can you have to see this. The mixture of Indian tradition, Turkish traditions, Parisian traditions, Arabic traditions. 
So the mix of different tradition, we call it as a composite culture. Now, as of now, Arabic, Persian, Turkish, Indian. Now, in India, we have many traditions. For example, in North India, a different type. For example, Parisian, Hindi combination, a new type of language also emerged, that is Urdu language. So likewise, outsiders and inside influence a new type. Example, Karosti in ancient Mauryan time period, Brahmi plus Aramaic led to Karosti. Similarly, Parisian plus Hindi led to this Urdu. So now you can see how mixing of different traditions leading to a new development. Same is the case. Now these traditions with uh, Gujarati, these traditions with Marathi, these traditions with uh, South Indian languages, traditions with Bengal. So mix and uh, Northeast Assam region and Northeastern parts, a different type of tradition emerges. So evolution of a composite culture. Now when it comes to economy, now we can see agricultural production, rise of urban economy, non-agricultural production, that means industrial production, trade and commerce. So same architecture. From 750 to 1200 also, same thing, agriculture, industry, trade and uh, commerce, and urban areas. Same is the case in this time period also. Next time period. The 15th and early 16th century, political developments and the economy, that means from 1400 to 1530, that means before the emergence of Mughals. Now same is the key. Now it is a, like a repetition. Now Turkish people came, now Delhi Sultanate emerged, now by 1500s, now Mughals. This is also other branch of Central Asian and other branch entered and this branch became more powerful and Mughals established their authority. Now the Delhi Sultanates are going to be replaced by Mughals. Because Mughals were so powerful, almost 300 years they were there. That is why it is very important phenomena. Now for same story, during Mughal time period, now again, same economy, same society, same religious condition, same literature traditions, we are going to see. Particularly, some important rulers like Akbar, he has taken many important uh, innovative steps. We have to study that. Between Mughals and Delhi Sultanate, between Sher Shah Shuri, one important ruler there, during his time period, many innovations in terms of administration economy took place. We will study about them also. Questions, many times questions are asked in that angle. Let us see. The structure is same thing now. Now around this time period, the Delhi Sultanate disintegrated, emerged into different, different uh, kingdoms. Like, when Babar came to India, So now we are talking about 1526, the famous first battle of Panipat took place. Now when first battle of Panipat took place, at this time, here Lodis were there, here Gujarat Sultanate, Malwa, Bengal, here Deccan Sultanates in this Vijayanagara Kingdom. And here, Assam dominated northeastern parts. So when Babar came, now this was part of Lodi's. Now when he came, first battle of Panipat took place. In this location, Rajputs were there. So story is going to be same repetition. Like what happened when Mughals established the territory. Like when Delhi Sultanate commenced. So initially they established Delhi as the major basis. Then they started conquering. So during their time period, Adavas, Kakatiyas, Hoyasalas, Pandyas were there, northeastern part. 
same is the case now when moguls came now they have to conquer once again the same thing only names of the kingdoms will change but aspects are going to be same like what is their conquest but during that time period what is the economy what is the society what is the religious condition and what their contribution like what is the painting architecture music literature so these dimensions are going to be common only time period changes let us say this the rise of provincial dynasties before the emergence of moguls if you see here in this location kashmir bengal what is the condition kashmir gujarat malwa when it comes to south bahmanis vijayanagara in delhi lodis were there now we can see when moguls came mogal empire first phase babar and humayun now between akbar and humayun shursha shersha shuri sur empire shersha administration very important now around this time period now when these developments are taking place in the land now from the oceans portuguese also came do you remember 1498 vasco da gama so he came from europe and he identified a new sea route to india by passing by passing this route earlier europeans were coming from this route europeans were using the land route and they were coming but now this area was under ottoman empire very powerful one they could they did not allow them to pass freely without paying high taxes that's why they started doing the alternative research alternative routes to india and vasco da gama reached 1498 now in 1500s portuguese even built empire the ocean empire portuguese empire that is why along with the indian rulers now portuguese european rulers are also there now these dynamics also changed that is why portuguese colonial enterprise after taking the inspiration from portuguese other people also came like english came dutch came danish came french people came we have to study about one by one then here in this time period portuguese dominated and when it comes to culture bhakti sufi tradition continuing now we can see the next rest of the chapters from 19 20 21 up to 24 it is about mogal time period only so now same thing now culture culture angle regional culture specificities literary traditions provincial architecture when it comes to vijayanagara vijayanagara society vijayanagara culture vijayanagara literature arts in vijayanagara empire now moguls specifically they mentioned about akbar akbar is a very famous ruler mogal ruler now what is there like alauddin khilji conquests akbar conquest expansion conquest and consolidation of empire administration so he establishment of jagir mansabdari system rajput policy religious social outlook sulhai kol religious policy court patronage art technology dimensions are same only time period is changing personality is changing now after him after akbar jahangir came after him shah jahan came then aurangzeb came we have to study again same thing major administrative policies of jahangir shah jahan aurangzeb empire and zamindars religious policies nature of the mogal state the administration of the mogal state a home kingdom northeastern regional kingdoms during mogal time period the regional kingdoms a home kingdom then disintegration of delhi sultanate disintegration of mogal empire crisis emerged shivaji shivaji early maratha kingdoms a home kingdom they are going to fight against the mogals late 17th century crisis for example there is one question latest 2022 you can see 
Aurangzeb's Deccan policy was a major factor in Mughal decline. Discuss. So this is how questions. Now when it comes to the economic angle, same Mughal economic. Now when it comes to Mughal economic primary sector, if you take in the modern segregation, same agriculture, industry, banking, insurance, commerce with the European. Through Dutch, English, French companies. Now you can see Europeans also came. It is another important one. Now, when it comes to urbanization, this was also the urbanization period. Many urban centers and became very powerful, and towns, the host, and the society during Mughal time period. Society. What is the population? Indian mercantile class. Conditions of peasants. Women conditions. Now you can see agriculture. Peasant condition, trading class, mercantile class, population, women condition. This time, Sikh community, the emergence of Sikh religion also emerged, like Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, Islam, Christianity. Now, Sikhism also emerged by this time period. We have to study about how Sikhism. Later, Sikhism religion has become a powerful army also. On what circumstances it became? Now. When it comes to literature, same thing. Persian histories, Persian language. Since the time period of Delhi Sultanate, Persian continued. So we will study about Persian literature. Then Hindi and regional Hindi literature, religious literature. So Persian histories, history type of art literature emerged. Then religious uh, literature also emerged. Then architecture, Mughal architecture, provincial architecture. Paintings, Mughal paintings, provincial paintings. Structure is same. Next, music. We have to see science and technology. We will see. In the end, like Delhi Sultanate disintegrated, different factors for it. Factors for the decline of Mughal Empire. Then, similarly, after the decline of Delhi Sultanate, many independent kingdoms emerged. Like Gupta Empire disintegrated, many kingdoms emerged. Mauryan Empire disintegrated. Many kingdoms emerged. Now, by this time, Delhi Sultanate disintegrated. Many kingdoms. Same Mughal Empire disintegrated. Many kingdoms. Here you can see Nizam, Hyderabad region, Bengal region, Awadh, UP region. Different kingdoms became powerful. Now, with these people, Britishers are about to fight. British became very powerful by defeating these people. Now. Specifically during this time period, we have to study about Marathas. For some time, Marathas became very powerful in Indian subcontinent. Maratha ascendancy under Peshwas, Maratha fiscal and financial system. What is their administrative style? Then emergence of Afghan. Again, like Delhi Sultanate time period, 1200s, Gajni raids. Next, Gori. By this time, after the disintegration of Mughal Empire, once again invasions from the earth, from Afghanistan side, from Iran side also. From Iran, Nadir Shah came. From Afghanistan, Ahmad Shah Abdali. At that time, here Marathas were ruling. So Ahmad Shah Abdali, Afghan, and Marathas are going to fight once again in the same place where Babur had fought with Lodis. This is Babur first battle. During Akbar time period, like Sher Shah Shuri uh, successors, second battle of Panipat. Now the third battle of Panipat. Afghans versus Marathas, third battle of Panipat. And this has made the British more powerful. Now Afghans, the emergence of Afghan power, then battle of Panipat, 1761. Now the state of political. Cultural, economic. On the eve of British conquest, when Britishers are about to emerge as powerful, dominant people, what is the political condition, cultural, economic conditions? So this is how. This is what a, the entire syllabus. Twenty-four. This is the last one, eighteenth century. Now, if you take this. From early medieval, from 752 till you can see the 24th, the 18th century. So before the emergence of British as powerful rulers, 
between 750 to British, we have to study about medieval. Structure is very common, only time period changes. The time period wise, if you take only, we have to study about society, economy, technology, religion, art and culture, political expansion, conquest, then administration. So once you conquer it, then administration, society, economy, technology, religion, architecture. This is the common one, but we have to study about from 750 to 1200. 750 to 1200, 1200 to 1530s, then 1500s to 1757. So different time period, same structure we need to study. So this is about how to handle medieval, how to see medieval India syllabus. Karthik, is it clear? Is it clear up to now? So, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Karthik. Today we are going to end this session here. In next class, we will come up with the, with the next topic.